battles again and while it is a very refreshing change from mainly playing quick battles it is also very stressful uh, but that's kind of what I like and what I don't like with with playing tournaments and playing competitive players is that you come up against players that are extremely good and if you have uh, if you mess up the faction selection if you mess up the build and you get the feeling that shit I've already lost this game at the beginning of the battle it can be very very difficult to gain that momentum back so but still if you want to get better at playing this game I highly recommend playing tournaments uh, not just relying on quick battles for battle experience because there are things going on in tournaments that you will never never see in quick battles and there are things going on in quick battles that you will never have to deal with in tournaments if you for example are tired of facing 12 evocati or 4 chariots there are rules against those things in tournaments so anyway this is the Sith 10 year anniversary I believe it's called the domination tournament and I'm playing against Mino he's a French guy and I have brought a Macedonian sword build because I figured, well, Macedonian sword build, that's pretty unexpected. So four royal pel peltasts in the center, two thorax swords on the sides. And then I have two Thoreo spears, two citizen cavalry, one Thessalian, one mercenary Thracian and one skirmisher cavalry. Now my opponent brought the Getai and his army looks quite formidable and quite large. I have the edge in swords but he has the edge in just pure numbers. And uh, it's, well, Wolf Blade Master says that Air of Carthage advertised my channel. So <laughs> that's pretty nice. Thank you. I'll be sure to thank you after I'm done recording this video. So the Mercenary Axe Warriors will be able to deal with my Peltas if they are getting good flanking and rear charges. Noble swords, he has two of those. But the the thing that worries me the most actually is it isn't his noble swords and his axe warriors because I can deal with those. But it's his it's it's but of all things it's his center line of armored spears, spears because these guys will take forever to kill. If I send my best troops against his armored spears they are going to lose their charge bonuses when they are going up against his best troops and his deployment here is very smart because it allows him to hold in the center and then go around the side. So I'm going to have to flank uh, to change my deployment slightly because if I just charge my ro royal peltas in here he's going to be able to envelop my smaller army fairly easily, defeat my thorax swords on the sides and it's a GG. So I'm kind of thinking, mm, what can I do to sort of not have that happen? And now he's also doing something very smart. He's moving all of his units to the side rather than going head on. So I'm going to have to respond to this in some way. Sending some guys up to skirmish with his bow horse so they don't get too many kills on my guys. And he has them on heavy shot, so I might be able to sneak these guys in range, moving these guys out of the range of his uh, of his bow horse. Now. Uh, in order to respond to this, there are several things you can do. You can, of course, just pull back, or you can, for example, post your, post your, keep rotating your lines to, to face his head on. But what I want to do here is I want to, to reorganize a bit. I want my thorax swords in the center, and then I want to be able to use my peltasts on the flanks to deal with his better troops and also to defend against skirmishing cavalry. So I'm moving my Royal Peltast behind my Thorax Sword, reorganizing a bit here. And this is potentially, a shift like this is potentially quite dangerous, because if you look at the, if you look at the um, shields here, <laughs> that guy threw a javelin a bit weird, I managed to hit some of the guys. But if you look at the shields, the, this is the unshielded side of my guys. And if, if he's able to flank around and get most of his units attacking me this way, it's going to allow him to attack my unshielded side. So I'm kind of doing a disorganized reorientation of my lines because I want to use my shields, obviously. And there's also in the data files there is a negative, uh, there is a negative uh, modifier for being attacked. I believe it's from being attacked in the flanks by units. So in the flanks on the non-shielded side, you get your your melee defense. Uh, cut in half or something like that. I'm not entirely sure. I'll make a video about that um, at a later time. How di how being attacked from different angles affects your unit, but um, I believe it's melee attack cut in half. So that is potentially huge, and especially with units like these 
like these um, axe warriors that will be able to land a lot of uh, armor penetrating hits. So here I'm putting away, skirmishing a bit with my mercenary Thracian cavalry. I really want to attack his noble horsemen, and because his noble horsemen are extremely good against these sword units, if they're able to get good charges on my royal peltas, it's going to be very difficult to to use my royal peltas effectively. More skirmishing with the bow horse. They aren't getting a huge amount of kills, but they are being annoying. And these guys, I'm not really sure what they're doing. You can see how the target selection isn't really the, or the way they are moving to to choose targets isn't really the best. They are kind of going for the center of the unit, and if the center of the unit moves fast, these guys won't be able to keep up. So here I'm moving around. It looks like we're going to get an engagement. I want to move my Thurios up to to just throw some javelins at his station skirmishers. That's going to provoke a response from his cavalry, so I'm just going to go into square with these Thoreos real quick, I believe. And I'm also going to throw some javelins with my royal peltas on his spear horse. Citizen cavalry against noble horse, that's not a good engagement for me, but I have to try to stop these guys somehow. And I'm also going to try to throw javelins at the noble horse, because the noble horse can do a lot of damage here. Um, over here as well, he's just posting his noble swords and mercenary axe warriors, so my flanks are going to be fairly easily destroyed, but I really want to use my royal peltas to skirmish for a bit, and in hindsight that might have been a mistake. The noble horse have a lot of hit points, and I'm not really killing them effectively yet. Here I try to get this unit with Thessalians, which of course is a massive mistake, because then they were caught and they lost their charge bonus. That was a potentially huge factor here, and being stressed out about that is going to make me not charge with my citizen cavalry over here, and now you can see this battle is looking pretty grim for me. I'm managing to kill the noble horse fairly effectively in skirmishing, but I'm also going to lose this unit of Thessalians, so the noble horse has already almost paid for itself. I'm trying to get at this uh, unit of spear horse, and the spear horse is going down to Peltas. Now, I didn't have attack orders on that unit, so... Well, that could have been uh, could have been arguably a pull through, uh, but I didn't have attack orders on the on the uh, spear horse, so it's kind of a gray area where I don't I don't I wouldn't have judged that as a pull through at all actually, but because I didn't have attack orders on that unit, if I had, then it would have been debatable, and that's just because of the rules of the tournament. I don't necessarily agree with the rules of the tournament, but here he's able to tie down most of my units, and with his superior amount of uh, units, he's going to be able to to start rear charging me, and that's going to be pretty bad. Here I'm giving attack orders on his noble horse, but they're going to get some rear charges. And rear charges against his royal peltas is going to kill quite a lot of them and reduce their effectiveness. Now I, I think I forget to put some of my guys in shield wall, I have most of my guys in shield wall, but I don't have all of my peltas in shield wall I believe, or did I? I meant to anyway. So I'm going for skirmishers with my mercenary Thracian cavalry. He's putting out his spear horse in order to intercept me. Um, manages to, uh, managing to stop some of them, th but they've already done a lot of damage to my thorax swords. And his mercenary axe warriors and spear horsemen are running amok in my back lines. So that's a pretty important factor here that I lost a lo uh, most of my cavalry early to bad engagements. It's going to allow him to rear charge me instead of being uh, me being able to rear charge and that that makes the difference between between a win and a loss basically the infantry engagements weren't the best I made a lot of micro mistakes here but to be honest I was kind of overwhelmed by the amount of units and my smaller elite force because I was expecting <laughs> it's kind of funny because he was expecting a spear rush from me and uh, a lot of cavalry while I was expecting a noble noble uh, sword rush from him so my plan was to hold his guys with my thorax swords and my uh, thuria spears and then javelin them to death with the royal peltas. But since he prepared for a spear and cavalry rush, he had a lot of good supporting units that were able to stop my own units. And just having a slight cavalry advantage allowed him to obliterate my cavalry, which in turn made the battle turn the way you're seeing now. But you can see how how th well the armored spears are holding up against the thorax swords here. It takes a whole lot of time to kill them, and when noble swords get into the mix, it's going to be a very difficult battle for for my smaller amount of units. So I took a gamble here, and I lost it, basically, and didn't micro 
crucial parts well. And I don't know if this was intentional or not on Minot's side, but it's a pretty nice move actually. M making your opponent move their entire army and reorient the entire army. Because if you're busy microing your skirmishers and your and your um, infantry while your opponent has his eyes on his on his um, well, your opponent has his eyes on, on very important cavalry engagements. It can be easy to get caught in those engagements, and, and if you lose the cavalry engagement, and all your infantry is tied up, and he has even these small units of, of uh, cavalry remaining, it's going to be extremely difficult to win against, even with thorax swords against armored spears, or even royal peltas. Although they are grinding it out fairly well here against the noble swords, the, the rear charge penalty is just going to it's just going to be too much for them to deal with so while the kills weren't that far off they are kind of deceptively low for Mino because I brought a smaller army than he did and looking at his army you can see that some of these units like the mercenary axe warriors they do extremely well because they're able to flank and rear charge the armored spears do sort of okay but the combination of getting a nice amount of kills on the skirmishers here and using the cavalry to take out my much inferior cavalry force enabled him to use his infantry advantage uh, decisively. So I had a total of, let's see here, this is a lot less infantry than I usually go for. I had 10 infantry units and he had, well actually he had the same amount of infantry units so that's, he had 10 infantry units as well. But he had these 3 foot skirmishers in addition to that and while I had 3 cavalry, he had one elite cavalry, I had one mid-tier uh, shock cavalry, and he had four of these melee cavalry and one skirmisher cavalry, so the cavalry advantage was decisive in this battle, allowed him to pull off a lot of good rear charges. So good game, well played to Mino. In the next battle, uh, this 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 battle I picked Macedon and he countered with the Getai, so good counter. In the next battle he uh, is going to pick Lusitani and I'm going to counter with Tylus, we'll see how that goes.